the video. If you haven't already noticed, you're in my car. We're currently on the way home from work. I haven't had a chance to do a video this week, so I wanted to do a video of sorts. Uh, I guess you could call it a car vlog. Um, we're going to stick to a topic. It's going to be short and sweet, and hopefully it'll help you with something that you're you're currently dealing with, whether it be hacking, uh, passwords not being complex enough, um, looking for a password manager. There's a lot of things we're going to cover in this video. Before we do that, I want to let you know this is going to be as uncut as possible, so you're going to see me or hear me or watch me stutter. Um, I'm going to say um a lot. There's going to be a lot of other things going on that uh, normally aren't in my videos that I would cut out. But we're going to jump right into it. Um, so, again, we're talking about security in this video. So this is going to be a security topic. We're going to talk about how you can get around or how you can better protect yourself on the virtual net, internet, however you want to uh, describe it. Um, it's virtual land. So let's talk about that. Let's jump right into the topic. The first order of defense that you have, the first layer of defense, is going to be your password. Um, talking about the passwords, we're Let's talk about some examples of some bad passwords. Uh, bad passwords can be uh, the word password. Um, it can be your last name, your birth date, your kid's name, maiden name, anything that ties it, honestly, anything that ties the password to you is a bad thing. Um, and that's because people can do uh, some research and find that information out about you. It's pretty easy to find out what your last name is, what your sister's name is, uh, your maiden name, very easy to find that information. So those are all bad examples of passwords. Uh, let's talk about some good. Let's talk about how to better your password. First of all, we want to use what's called a complex password. Um, it's complex passwords. I'm going to have something maybe right here in the video. Uh, I'll do this in post processing, but I'll have the little description here. Um, but a, a complex password is a password that I believe is 12 characters in length or longer. Um, it needs to have uh, numbers, symbols, uppercase, and uh, those are, are keys. I'm going to have a few examples of some tough passwords or complex passwords maybe over here. I don't know if I want to do anything pretty, but uh, it will be there. Um, these passwords can be anything from like 12 characters in length, capital uh, letters like capital L, lowercase e. I'm not going to spell it all out. But just make sure you have numbers, symbols, uh, uppercase, lowercase, and I, I believe you don't need to go lower than 12. Um, you honestly could be safer, not safer, you honestly could be safe if you went with something less than 12, but my general rule of thumb is if I, if I can remember it the first time I type it, it's not strong enough. Uh, it takes me about 10 or 15, maybe 20 times of typing that password before I start memorizing it and this is just me not trying to remember it if I wanted to memorize it I could very easily but I feel that uh yeah that's my general rule of thumb 12 characters in length capital uh, letters lowercase letters number sign or at sign special characters and, and numbers as well so that is my number one thing is do a complex password second thing on my list that I want to talk about is um, come up with a schedule. And when I say a schedule, come up with a, um, a monthly, uh, quarterly. Yeah, I would say do it more than more than more than a year. Uh, don't do it. A, don't give it a year's worth of time before you do this. What I'll talk about is this, set up a schedule to change your passwords. Um, the harder it is for you to type your password in, the harder it is for them, the hackers, the people that want your information. So remember that. So number one, complex passwords. Number two, set up a schedule, uh, whether it be monthly, bi bi-monthly, uh, quarterly, annual. Annually, I would say is is a is a stretch. If you have it annually, there is a chance that your password could be leaked. Um, there's uh, tons and tons of data breaches that happen every year, and your password could be one of those. Another thing that I just thought about that I should have said at the beginning is don't have the same password for every account. Switch it up. Have passwords, have a, have a separate password for every account that you own. And uh, if you're probably thinking, well, how do I keep up with that? And that segues into my next point. Use a password manager. Uh, there's quite a few password managers out there. There's KeyPass, there is LastPass, and there's several others. Um, 
me personally, I use LastPass. I even use LastPass to generate my complex passwords. Um, if you want a tutorial on how to do that, I can I can do that. Just let me know in the comment section below. KeyPass is a really good one as well. Uh, the only problem with KeyPass is it's tied to your device. And yeah, you may think that's a good thing, and that's great. But I've had incidents, three in total, where my KeyPass database, for whatever reason, maybe it was updated, uh, for whatever reason, would just be corrupted, so I would lose all my passwords. LastPass, um, it is also local, but it's tied to your account, and your account is on is used through LastPass's uh, website. So they are basically storing that in the cloud, but LastPass is very secure, so you don't have anything to worry about there. Um, so that will tie that all in together as far as the password goes. Now, another thing I want to talk about, you know, since we're on the topic of passwords, is what's better than a password for your account? One layer of, of security? It could be two layers. Uh, so two-factor authentication. If your website supports two-factor authentication, turn it on. Turn it on immediately. Set it up. There's been several incidents where, some way, shape, or form, I have a password that's old, and I have two-factor authentication come on. It will notify me, hey, someone uh, tried to log in with your password. This happened to me on like a um, old gaming website. I turned on, it's old, but I turned on two-factor authentication. They had that technology back, back when I used it. And um, someone used my password. I guess they had a password data breach. Someone used my password and notified me and said, hey, your, your account's been locked. Um, someone tried to use your password. And two-factor authentication is very nice. Yes, it's a pain. But like I mentioned before, the harder it is for you to log into your accounts, the harder it is for them to log into your accounts. I am a firm believer in uh, more security versus less security. So two-factor authentication is a pain. It's annoying. You have to verify that it's you, verify that's your identity. But it's very secure. I've turned it on on all my accounts as support uh, two-factor authentication, and uh, that's a good idea to do that as well, especially if you're trying to stay ahead or stay safe from hackers. Um, my next topic is going to be talking about email. So you were still, so so let's talk about email. Sorry, I'm stuttered a little bit. I'm doing a lot of things right now, um, but with email. There's a lot of things that you need to look out for when it comes to email. So there's a process, before we begin, um, there's a process called uh, steganography, and that's where someone can embed code into certain files. So if you click on a file, that code will execute on your computer, and it will execute whatever was programmed into that file. These files can be almost every file, but a text file, that TXT. Uh, that's what researchers have found. It can be a PowerPoint, it can be someone sending you a PDF file, it can be any file out there. So be very careful when opening up attachments in emails, and also be very careful of clicking links. Uh, my rule of thumb for emails is if someone sends me an email and I don't know them, and I immediately delete the email, and also I set up a uh, spam, spam alert to make sure that email goes to spam going forward. Second rule is if I have someone that I know shoot me an email, with an attachment, I contact that person and make sure that that attachment is is meant to be for me. Um, there's a lot of times where people get spoof emails. Spoofing emails is where someone says, "Hey, I am I am Derek at Yahoo.com, and I send you an email, even though I'm actually a uh, fake account, or I'm uh, I was able to, to spoof my account to make it look like Derek at Yahoo.com. It could be." And people also, another tactic people use is they, um, is they'll misspell the email and you won't pay any attention. They'll say it's from Derek Falls, but it's, it's Derek with the R, with one R instead of two. And you say, oh, it's from Derek. And you click the link and, uh, and it said, you know, you're, you, you got, your computer's locked and they're asking you for money to unlock it. That's called ransomware. That's a very big hitter in, uh, IT world and as well as just normal, um, mom and pop shops and, just normal people and basically what well, ransomware is real quick they'll it'll lock your computer down ask you for money you pay the money and they send you the uh, encryption key to unlock your files all at, during which your files are all locked 
until you either pay for it or you have to basically lose all your files and redo your computer. Um, so that is another thing that's very important. Never click a link in an email unless you know, sorry for this annoying um, turn signal here, but never click an email or never click an attachment or a URL in the email that you're receiving unless you know 100% I would say even 110% that it actually came for you. Um, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? So as you know, um, you no one is 100% safe. The steps that I've given have provided you will make it where you're pretty much, as far as a user, meaning you, as far as your side of the of the um, bargain or your side of the deal or however you want to say it you're 100% safe if you follow my rules you as concerning you will uh, well, you'll see what I'm saying that in a moment but concerning you you're safe things that can happen that will get your data out uh, number one a data breach there's every day a company is uh, someone is hacking into a company and stealing passwords there's not much you can do about that um, you're basically at the mercy of the company. Sometimes companies have waited years before they even said, hey, you had a data breach. I mean, just think about uh, recently Facebook had all passwords stored in a, in a, in a document. And someone could, could have easily got those passwords. So it's very important to, that's why I said at the beginning of the video, change your passwords. Put up a schedule. That is to protect you just in case someone is reckless as far as the company is, is concerned and leaks your data or someone has in and gets your data if you're if you're on a, a schedule then you're pretty much safe as long as you stick to that schedule because what happens is they get your people get your password or get your credit cards they don't use them they sell them on the black market which is um, on the using the, um, the dark web um, and then dark, dark web is a uh, pretty pretty nasty place um, but if you haven't been there, it's, it's, I would say you want to be very careful if you do go there, but um, they put it on the dark web on, on certain websites. They then sell your information. They get paid for it, and whoever buys your information can then do pretty much anything they want to do, whether it be use your, use your credit card number to buy something. Um, most of the time, it's very, they, what they do is they get that. They buy very small things where you won't notice. Um, but that is pretty much what I wanted to talk, talk about today. I'm trying to think to see if there's anything else out there that I wanted to talk about. Um, so what I'll do, I've written all this down as far as everything I want to talk about. So if this is all I want to talk about, I'm going to end the video here. If not, I'll add an attachment to the end of the video of me at home talking about the next thing that I may have not mentioned here. Let me know what you think about the uncut uh, version of me. Um, I'm very self subconscious, so I, I, I cut all my stuttering and all my ums and everything out of my normal videos. But let me know if you like this one. If you did, I'll do more car vlogs and I'll talk more about um, whatever you want to talk about, whether it be what got me the technology or anything. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for running along. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I am going to be trying to get back on a weekly schedule. I have a few uh, methods that I've came up with to get me back on track. So um, and this is one of them. Uh, record while I'm driving. Not really looking at the camera. I'm looking at the road, so it's not risking any harm here. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you did. If you didn't, let me know if you did. Let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like about it. Uh, but yeah, guys, I'll see, I'll see you guys next time.